ear is also known as stato acoustic organ stato here means balancing of the body and acoustic means hearing so basically ear performs the dual function of balancing the body and hearing in this video we are concerned with the hearing function or the acoustic function of the ear talking about ear ear is divided into three external ear middle ear and internal ear these are the three compartments of the ear the external ear comprises of a pinna which is a mammalian feature and located outside the skull it is composed of the articular cartilage and lobule the function of this pinna this pinna here is to collect the sound waves so this pinna in the external ear collects the sound waves and concentrate it to the tube like structure or a canal like structure which is known as external auditory canal or it is also known as external auditory meatus the function of pinna is directly proportional to its size the more is the size of the ear pinna the more is the collection of the sound waves for example in elephant the size of pinna is very large therefore they can hear the sound from very far and collect very minute sound waves for example the pinna of the elephant is very large so they can even perceive the minute sounds from the farthest distance now this external auditory canal or external auditory meatus is a canal of about 2.5 cm in length and consists of glands which are known as ceruminous glands the ceruminous glands are called so because they secrete cerumen actually these glands are modified sweat glands they secrete cerumen which is a sticky substance to which the microorganisms or the dust particles attach and by the jerky movements of the mandible or the temporomandibular joint they just fall off with the cerumen and could be easily removed from the ear with the help of an earbud so basically external auditory canal or meatus performs the function of immunity external auditory canal ends into a membrane like structure which is known as tympanic membrane or in the lame language it is known as the eardrum so the eardrum is the membrane structure which transmits the sound from external ear to the middle ear or it could be called the connection between the external or the middle ear the cross sectional view of the eardrum is as at the periphery it is in contact with the external auditory meatus with the help of fibro cartilaginous ring at the center of the eardrum or the tympanic membrane is a tensed area which is therefore known as pars tensa and surrounding it is the pars flaccida which is obviously flaccid the tympanic membrane or the eardrum marks the beginning of the middle ear which is a ear filled cavity reminding again this isn't an anatomical diagram but is meant for the physiological understanding of the mechanism of hearing so this is the ear filled cavity the middle ear which comprises of three ear ossicles or three bones which are present in it the bone first which is present is known as the malleolus this is the first ear ossicle the second one here is incus and the last is stapes now the reason of the center of the tympanic membrane and eardrum being tense is this the handle of the first ear ossicle malleolus the sound waves which are collected by the pinna are transferred via the external auditory meatus as vibrating particles or vibrating waves which then pass on their energy to this eardrum which vibrates and pass on these vibrations to the handle of the malleolus which conducts the vibrations further into the incus and then passes them to the stapes so basically 
Malleus incurs and stapes or the ear ossicles act as the lever system and they help transmit the vibrating mechanical sound energy from one to another. So the anatomy of middle ear is such that there is about 18 times the amplification of the sound received. Now why is it so? Because the anatomical structure of the middle ear is such that the difference between the surface area of the tympanic membrane and the say foot plate of the stapes is so different that it leads to the amplification 18 times so basically two mechanisms help the amplification of sound in the middle ear first is the difference in the surface area of the tympanic membrane and the foot plate of the stapes and the second is the lever system of the ear ossicles this could be proven easily by the fact that sound travels faster in the solid medium than in the liquid in ear now this foot plate of the stapes here is in close contact with the window which is indeed the window of the internal ear and is known as oval window Now the structure of internal ear is quite difficult because internal ear is a spiral organ or rather tortuous so it is not possible to draw it on a 2D scale now this internal ear consists of four parts first is the cochlea second is the saccule third utricle and fourth the semicircular canals cochlea is the main organ for hearing saccule and utricle collectively are known as vestibule and vestibule and semicircular canals together are known as vestibular apparatus function of vestibular apparatus is balancing as for hearing only cochlea is required we'll here only discuss the structure of cochlea Now, cochlea is a tortuous organ and is difficult to understand. To make it more simpler and to understand better, the structure of cochlea could be drawn simply as a test tube within a test tube structure. This is one test tube, and inside it there is one another test tube. Now, this is the simplest drawn structure of cochlea. Now, this test tube within a test tube structure creates three windows here. this one being the one this is red is the second and green being the third these colors are merely for the representation the blue window about discussed is the oval window also known as fenestra ovalis the screen window below is known as round window or fenestra rotundus now this test tube within a test tube structure makes the structure of cochlea easy and better to understand uh, this creates three compartments one above one in the middle and one below this compartment above is known as scala vestibuli this compartment in the middle is known as scala media media here means middle and this last compartment here is known as scala tympani it is obvious here that scala vestibuli is associated with the oval window and the scala tympani is associated with the round window now as middle ear was a air filled cavity internal ear here is a fluid filled cavity the fluid in scala vestibuli is known as perilymph breaking the two words peri and lymph peri means at the periphery and lymph means the fluid the fluid which is filled at the periphery so obviously at scala tympani or in the scala tympani the fluid would again be perilymph the fluid filled in the middle cavity or the scala media is known as endolymph endo means inside and lymph means fluid the fluid which is inside is known as endolymph again This test tube within a test tube structure also creates two membranes. This membrane one is between the scala vestibuli and scala media, and here one is known as Reisner's membrane. And the second membrane, which is obviously created between scala media and scala tympani, is represented by two, is basilar membrane. 
The cochlea of the internal ear performs the important function of converting the mechanical or physical sound signals into the neuronal signals or neuronal impulses. This is achieved by the help of an organ which is known as organ of corti. Organ of corti is a spiral organ located inside the scala media. It comprises of hair cells which are the outer hair cells. These outer hair cells are obviously located outside but throughout the scala media and throughout the cochlea and these are the inner hair cells which are located a bit inside and also throughout the cochlea these are our outer hair cells and these are the inner hair cells they are called as hair cells because they possess a fine projection or a hair like particle which is excitatory Besides this, they also possess some supporting cells. Only the name of the supporting cells is to be remembered. These are the supporting cells. The name of the supporting cells could be easily remembered by the mnemonic PHD. P here stands for pillar cells. H means Henson cells and D means dater cells. Besides these cells of the organ of corti, outer hair cells, inner hair cells and supporting cells, there is one another structure which is present in the scalar media indeed. Now this red color membrane represented here is the tectorial membrane. So speaking of the structure of organ of corti, which is the spiral organ and an important organ in the physiology of hearing, it comprises of outer hair cells, inner hair cells, supporting cells and tectorial membrane. These all forms the organ of corti. Besides these structures of the organ of corti, there is also a tunnel of corti which cannot be represented in a 2D diagram but it is present in the scalar media and within the organ of corti and is formed by the outer hair cells and inner hair cells only. To understand better, a cross-sectional area, a cross-sectional view of the cochlea would be seen as first is the perilymph filled cavity known as the scalar vestibuli, second is the endolymph filled cavity known as the scalar media and the last is the scalar tympani filled again with the perilymph. This membrane here is the membrane 1 which is regional membrane and this membrane here is the membrane 2 which is the bacillus membrane. Besides this, there are outer hair cells, inner hair cells and supporting cells and above them is the membrane which is the acellular membrane present in the scalar media known as the tectorial membrane. So this was all about the structure of cochlea. Now the actual physiology of hearing begins with receiving the sound waves from the source by the pinna. The larger the pinna, the better is the perception of sound. The pinna conducts, concentrates and conducts the sound via the external auditory canal or meatus to the middle ear via the tympanic membrane or the eardrum. The eardrum or tympanic membrane is the connectivity between the external ear and the middle ear. The middle ear is an air-filled cavity which possesses three ear ossicles or the three bones malleus incus and stapes which are interconnected to one another the handle of malleus is in close contact with the eardrum so the sound waves pass from the external auditory meters and pass on the energy to the eardrum which further passes on its energy to the malleus via the handle now this malleus is in close contact with the incus which receives the energy and it transfers the energy to the stapes now stapes has a foot plate which is in close contact with the oval window of the scala vestibuli. From the oval window begins the internal ear and the important organ for hearing which is cochlea. Yeah. Now the vibrations which are carried by the stapes are transferred to the oval window which transfers them to the scala vestibuli and directly to the perilymph. The perilymph or the fluid starts vibrating and passes on the energy vibration to the membrane 1 which is the reasonous membrane. Now this reasonous membrane compresses and passes the vibrations to the scalar media or the endolymph. Now endolymph again starts vibrating 
and passes on the energy to the membrane 2 that is the bacillus membrane now the bacillus membrane compresses and rebounds again and on rebounding the hair cells outer hair cells and inner hair cells get irritated by coming in contact with this acellular tectorial membrane which stimulates this hair cells to the action potential now this is where the sound is converted into the neuronal impulses from the mechanical energy so from here various neurons arise and form the cochlear nerve which further continues as the 8th cranial nerve into the temporal lobe where the sound is perceived. So a quick revision, pinna receives the sound waves, perceives the sound waves, external auditory meatus conducts it to the tympanic membrane or the eardrum which further transfers it to the malleus incus and stapes bone of the middle ear. Middle ear because of its anatomical structure provides an 18 fold amplification of the sound. The foot plate of the stapes is in close contact with the oval window. This oval window is where the internal ear begins. Oval window is in close contact with the scalar vestibuli or it is the beginning, indeed beginning of the scalar vestibuli. The vibrations of the stapes when transferred to the oval window tends to vibrate the perilymph of the scalar vestibuli. The pen perilymph vibrate, it compresses the membrane, reasoner's membrane and on compression, reasoner's membrane further compresses the endolymph of the scalar media which leads to the moving of this bacillar membrane back and forth and on rebounding the outer hair cells and inner hair cells irrit get irritated by the tectorial membrane. This converts the mechanical sound impulses into the neuronal impulses which are carried away by the neurons which form the cochlear nerve. Cochlear nerve is the part of the 8th cranial nerve which is the auditory nerve which goes to the temporal lobe where the sound is perceived. So this is all about the physiology of mechanism of hearing. For making this video and also for the learning purpose I refer to the textbooks. The textbook of ENT, Ear, Nose and Throat by P.L. Dingra and Shruti Dingra. The textbook of Human Anatomy by Dr. B.D. Churasya and the textbook of Physiology by Sam Bullingham. These books are a must have for a medical student. You can buy these books online by clicking the links given below in the description. And if you don't like them, you can always return them. Thanks for watching.